Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokar, Professor of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. As I started discussion on the personal identity and this is the second lecture of this series. And in today's lecture I will be discussing the parameters of identification. That is various parameters which are used to establish the identity. Then I will be discussing what are various methods of identification which are the subjective, objective and the third party. Now starting with the lecture about the parameters of identification. The parameters which are used are as the general data. General data about the individual like the name, age, sex, residential address and other general data that is gathered. Name, age, sex, stature, religion, race and so on they can be collected. Then the dental data the presence of teeth, whether they are primary or the secondary and, and when, in which state they are, that is gathered. And the skeletal data about the bones, in which state they are. Then the genetic data which is utilized. So I am just mentioning the uh, parameters and we will be discussing all these parameters in detail in the next upcoming lectures and just uh, summarizing the data, uh, the parameters. Then the identification by the trace evidence, that any trace which is left at the scene of crime that can help in identification, how we proceed from that. That may be the dust, the mud, the skin, na and nail scrapings. So the photographs can help us the handwriting, the signatures, they can be the, become the parameter. Then DNA fingerprinting, that if you have gathered the trace evidence or you have detected some material, biological material, then the DNA fingerprinting can be done. Dactylography, the fingerprint, the prints of the uh, pads of the fingers, they can be collected and studied. And this is known as the Galton's method of fingerprint or the footprints and this is the surest method one of the surest methods like the DNA fingerprinting and the lip printing which is also called as the chiloscopy or the poroscopy the pores on the uh, certain area the hands or the area which is under considered that can be studied then the blood grouping can also be done the height and weight index the anthropometry or the Bertillon system, which is the measurement of various uh, parts, and the tattoo marks. We can study about the tattoo marks if somebody has bought the tattoos, and it can help us in identification. Then various scar marks, scar mark of disease, scar mark of injury, or scar mark of some therapy, some operation that can help us in identity. Then the occupational marks, the marks which are uh, gathered by certain occup occupation like the uh, driver, the cobbler, the uh, any tattoo that can, uh, any occupational mark that can help. Then the pierced ears, this can be characteristic for some females and some males also. Then the x-ray of the frontal sinus and the shape of the frontal sinus is different in every individual and is very uh, diagnostic sign and it can help us also in the decomposed bodies. Then the mis miscellaneous data like the uh, physiological data of movement and the gates, the gesture, the posture, these are all the miscellaneous physiological data. And the personal belongings, the clothes, the ornaments and the watch and anything which belongs to the individual, the ID card, the driving license it can help in identity. The photographs of the individual, the voice recognition, the handwriting and the habits, they are also become the important tools of recognition. Now about the methods of identification. As we know that the forensic medicine plays an important role in the determination of personal identity and for this method the three methods which are most common are employed for the establishment of the identity of the individual. 
and they can be applied in different situations like the body is fresh or the decomposed or the on the living person or the dead person though in any situation different methods are applied now they these three methods they are the subjective method the objective method and the third party method i'll discuss these methods one by one about the third party method this is the most commonly used method that means the two parties are the one is the examiner the doctor and the other the examinee the person the individual or the dead body and the third party is the third person who identifies the examinee and that third person or the third party may be the parents the next of kin the family friends the police or any third person can identify this is the third party method of identification the names of the third party identifier with the national identity card number and the relationship with the diseased or with the living person they are entered in the report now about the subjective method of examination this subjective method of identification is applied when third party is not present for the identification or not available and this is done with the help of certain morphological data of the examinee this data should be collected by the medical person personnel and preferably the best is that it should be collected at the time of medical legal examination the specific characters having a relationship to that person they are recorded in detail the physical characters of the examinee and his belonging belongings they are listed together and the specific characters like the height weight or you find any congenital anomaly like the web fingers or any congenital anomaly that can be specific identity of that individual and it should be noted then the personal belonging can be the wrist watch the spectacles the cap or anything the clothes uh, any belonging that can be gathered listed down and should be written down at autopsy in case of fresh body this information be quite extensive because the body is in front of you the subject is in front of you and from head to toe every uh, characteristic is his uh, specific to that individual the hair the face the eye the mustache the beard the chin the ears everything is specific to that individual but when the body is in putrefied state and especially when it is in much advanced state or it is mutilated with some missing parts this information then becomes limited and the parameters which can be applied in for the personal identification they can be classified into either the anatomical parameters physiological parameters pathological parameters or genetic parameters regarding the anatomical parameters the body as a whole from head to toe is the anatomical characteristics age sex stature weight they help in this regard and other anatomical parameters like the shape and design of the body its and its components of various parts of the body like the face having a specific shape specific shape of the face about specific characteristics of the eye nose lips chin cheeks color of the iris and so on so they all specific to that individual the hands and feet having the fingerprints on their finger pulp and this is very important finding and this can help us in identity the other anatomical parameters can further be subdivided into the primary parameters and the secondary the primary parameters are basically they are present at the time of birth like the facial features and the secondary parameter which appear and develop in various stages of the life like the secondary sex characters or 
scar marks, tattoo marks or any other character which develops later on during the life become the secondary anatomical character. Then the physiological parameters can be like the gait, voice, tone and the manner of the speech. The path pathological parameters are the marks of some disease which has been contracted during the life like eczema and its remnants as scar or the calcified fibroid can help us about the identity. Then about the genetic parameters, the characteristics in the blood group or any other inherited morphological character like the bar bodies or any other genetic material is the genetic characteristic or parameter. Now about the objective method, objective method mean that any object having an association with the subject and that helps in identity and these objects can be either the uh, morphological data or the personal belonging data. So this data is analyzed by the investigating authorities to isolate the individual specific character or some identity clue. So this is important finding and this then will lead to the personal identity. So any character having an intimate association to a person which may be in the body or in the belongings of a person are sufficient evidence to establish his identity. Like when we find some fattest individual, the fattest, the shortest, the tallest boy or girl or any person in an organization, in a uh, neighborhood or in a class. No, it does not need any other characteristic. So we can pinpoint that was the tallest, that was the shortest or that was the fattest. So this is an important identity clue. The objective method is also very helpful in cases of decomposed and mutilated remains. And for this, the materials and the remains which are available, but they are lacking facial identity, they are then sorted out. They are sorted out into biological uh, material which is collected or non-biological material. The biological material, we isolate it into the material which resists putrefaction like the hair, nails and the bones and the other material which is putrefying. So different information can be gathered from the material which resists putrefaction and from the material which is uh, going on under the putrefaction stage. So but the most valuable information will be from the, uh, this biological material which resists putrefaction like the hair, nail and bones, they are cleaned, they are isolated and they are then studied and they are studied for uh, phys physical examination, the microscopy is done and the radiology is done on the bones and the, all the characteristics they are studied. For example, if you find a bone and that bone can lead to the identity of the individual. For example, first we have established whether this is bone and if it is bone, if it is human and human then its age, sex, race, all the parameters can be applied. Similarly on the hair and other uh, characteristics or the parameter which we detect. Then the non-biological material may be the clothes or any other belonging. The belonging other can be the wristwatch, the spectacle, the cap or it can be specific the ID card, driving license or any other document and on the clothes we will find out the style of the clothes, the tailor mark, the laundry mark, this is very important information and sometimes on the clothes there is biological material which is left over as a trace and this biological material may be blood, the saliva, the semen and if it is dried up and not fortified then this has been preserved naturally and it can help us a lot in identity. So this is all about various parameters 
which we'll be studying in the further lectures and about the methods which are commonly employed. So thank you very much. Please subscribe to my channel. And this is my channel name, Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokhar, Lectures on Forensic Medicine.